well, Christmas is over, and the uh, cheap set of Christmas lights we had on the fence has stopped working abruptly. And after I've untangled all of these series connected string LEDs, I thought I'd have a look. It's also something to do uh, because at the moment uh, the native bushland adjacent the fire tower I operate in is actually all on fire 11,000, nearly 12,000 hectares of it. Um, and uh, my adjacent fire tower, it actually has burnt. So uh, luckily the fire tower operator got out in time. But we have had stuff like this raining down in the front yard because we're downwind of it as well. There's some tense times, but uh, I've got to do something to occupy myself. In any case, let's get started here. So this, I've already managed to uh, partly disassemble this. Now, when I got this, it's got uh, two buttons here. It's got a mode and an on and off. And I was pretty sure the mode didn't do anything. But when I've lifted the lid here, I found it actually does indeed have two switches. And um, I think what the problem was, there was a little problem with the way they positioned the rubber insert in here. So I found that the mode button in experimenting turns it from flash or a continuous mode. Now in here we find there's a little nickel metal hydride, a 600 milliamp hour job, very, very cheap. It is dead flat, not the slightest bit of voltage whatsoever, but they were kind enough to make it replaceable. And uh, there is a little solar panel on here, but I'm not quite sure how that battery is completely died. Uh, I have found that when I attach a standard um, a standard uh, alkaline cell, oh, that's somebody entering through my front driveway with the entry beam, something I'll do later. But we can see, with the lights at least, that there's a standard setup that works with a 1.5 volt cell. Now, it does seem that the intensity tapers off beyond the point. And we get to... Around about here, there's this one that's just working. This one's not working at all. I suspect these might have been hanging upside down and there's some water gone in there. So I'll investigate that shortly. But uh, the other thing I'm interested here is I probably will pull this battery out and check the outgoing voltage. I'll chop some leads off because I think that this capacitor, resistor and little 8-pin chip here are probably an inverter circuit. From last I recall... I know at least the blue LEDs need about 3.3 volts in order to light up before you reach the forward bias. There's a whole bunch here that, as there's only two lights, uh, two wires here, they're either in one big uh, series string or they're parallel, and I suspect they're parallel, which means you're going to need a little bit of stepping up from the 1.5 volts in the cell. So I'm going to do a little bit more investigating and a bit more dismantling, and we'll see what we get. I'll just show off some of the quality Chinese soldering here. We can see here, <laughs> that's not too bad considering a lot of the ones I see, but it's still a very cold solder. Uh, and up here, it's they're not even stopping to trim it. Although I guess by the time that Australians pay $20 for something like this, it's probably really been marked up about 3,000% by the time we get it. The actual person that did this probably only got paid maybe a dollar for this. We can see here there's not even any solder pads for three of the pins on that chip. I'm going to find out what that chip is and exactly what it does. Well, it's interesting to try and get an angle on this. I'm not sure if we can see. There we go. It says 8615C on the top of that chip. Well, I had a bit of a look here and I found it's actually a series of... 20 megahertz inverter chips used primarily for barcode scanners however the 8616 we've got here looks like it's a voltage doubler or even just a little variation of a quad op amp perhaps um, a single dual or quad rail to rail input output single supply amplifier well i think what they're doing here is with this circuit here we have the capacitor and the resistor I've seen something very similar used before in 1.5 to 9 volt inverter circuits. So I'm going to chop the wires off this and uh, see what it's putting out. So let's see what's going on here. We've got a battery installed. We'll pull this out well. We've got a grand old 1.5 volts coming out. That's unusual. 
I'm not sure why. So if we turn this off, we can see the capacitor discharge. So it is literally outputting 1.5 volts. So this is a bit of a mystery as to what that chip is actually doing. Unless they're just using one of the gates purely to turn it on and off with the sun. So let's lift this up here and expose it to some light, some LED light. Well, it doesn't appear to be turning off at all. So that's very interesting. I'm not sure what's going on here. I think it warrants further investigation. Right, so I have my uh, multimeter hooked up to the actual battery terminals here. I have a, a good old 4D mag light that I purchased from the States on my last trip there. Now, my interest was, was the solar panel actually working? And uh, was the charge circuit actually doing its thing? So let's tip this on its side. We can see there's a little bit of voltage building already, just from the LED strip above it. But this has an incandescent globe, which should provide enough light to get a decent output. And we do. We have a 2.2 volts out. So it would appear that the charge circuit is working. If we then turn off the power switch, it actually stops charging. So if it's switched off, it's not charging as well. That's an interesting side effect. Now if we flick our second switch here for flash mode, doesn't seem to make much difference, which is pretty predictable. We thought that might be the case. Well, this is interesting. I might see if I have another rechargeable battery, and we might just sit this in the sun for a few hours and see what happens. Well, this thing's been out in the full sun for probably something like four hours now. Let's have a look at this battery and see what she's saying. Let's hold this here. It's a little warm, to be expected. Well, 1.38 volts, which is actually not too bad considering it's a 1.2 volt cell. So that's, that's actually come up to charge. I didn't get anything at all out of it before. That was really surprising. So let's reconfigure our clips here for a moment. And we'll clip back onto our LED output. And we'll see what goes on here. So here we go. It's set to on. We've got nothing out at the moment. I'm seeing 1.3 volts out of it at the moment. And it's fluctuating if I turn off the mode. It levels out. That's not too bad. Okay, so that is actually functioning as it should. So maybe it's something to do with the LED string. So... I'm going to go and see if I can find any sort of wiring faults with that. Alright, so I did a little experiment here. I have my multimeter, which I'll place up here for your viewing pleasure. This will be over here somewhere. Alright, so what I did, I opened up one of these LEDs and had a look. And there's a little plastic divider in there to keep legs apart. All the usual stuff. Key thing I discovered, they are uh, parallel connected which is, makes it a little difficult to track down the problem. But let's have a look here. They work really, really brightly. I chopped one of the legs off, but when I connect that, all of a sudden, our volts on the line, if we can see past my hand here, drop from a healthy 1.2 to somewhere about 0.45 volts. So that tells me there's definitely some kind of a short or possibly some corrosion in the back of these things somewhere. Considering that some of these were hanging downwards and that there was some rain and some sprinklers and stuff running, probably water's got in and corroded one of them. So they are running nice and bright. So I think nothing wrong with the circuit. I think it's just the LED string. But uh, when I first bought these, I had in mind a plan to chop them up and use the LEDs anyway. So I'm just going to chop this tail section of the string off and reuse it. And uh, leave a few on here so that my uh, little apprentice has something to watch out the window at night. Anyway, it's an interesting bit of work, and uh, maybe I'll do a quick little shot when I've got it all back together again. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, it's diagnosis, fault found. I like pulling stuff apart anyway. I hope you enjoyed watching.